Uh, hi, I'm Skinny Cheeks, back with another Elder Scrolls Online guide. This one will be covering the critical hit systems, crit chance, crit damage, and crit resistance. I also did a video covering armor and penetration, so make sure to check that one out as well if you haven't already. This one will be set up in a pretty similar format. So we'll start off with crit chance. The premise behind it is pretty simple, but we'll get into the weird stuff that Zoss has done with it here in a second. Everyone starts off with a base 10% chance to land a critical strike. And then the higher you get that number, the higher chance you'll have. At 10%, you will average one in 10 hits that would crit, 50% would be a coin flip, 75% would be three out of every four hits, and so on. Pretty basic there. However, crit chance does not always show up as a percentage on the various sources that it comes from. Looking at stuff like buffs, gear set bonuses, champion points, and the Thief Mundestone, at first glance these numbers won't really mean anything because how can a percent chance be a number like that? But that's why I'm here doing this video. For some reason Zoss decided to assign a flat number value to critical chance which represents that percentage. So their chosen number for 100% critical chance is 21912. Now this may seem super random but let me explain. The formula Zoss uses for determining what number will represent 100% crit chance is 2 times your level times 100 plus your level. So if we were treated as level 50 characters the way that NPCs are this would come out to a nice easy even 15,000 to represent 100% crit chance. And so 1,500 would be 10%, 150 would be 1%, and so on. However, due to the veteran rank system that used to be present in the game, there were 16 additional levels that could be gained past level 50. This was eventually scrapped, and now we have the milestone of 160 champion points in its place, but players are still treated as level 66 instead of level 50. So if you plug that level 66 into the same formula, that comes out to the 2191 two value that I mentioned before. Pretty convoluted and awkward if you ask me, but hey, I'm just the messenger here. And just to clarify, it doesn't matter if you're actually a low level character due to the battle scaling that they introduced in one Tamriel, your stats are still scaled up to level 66 regardless of your actual level. But if you're curious, you can see the values that you would have at lower levels without the scaling if you look at low level gear while on a max level character. So knowing that 21912 is 100% crit chance, you can easily figure out that 2191 is 10% crit chance and 219 is 1% crit chance. Why they don't just hide these numbers and replace them with the actual percent, I have no idea doesn't really seem necessary for us to have that extra layer there. If they want to use the system under the hood, that's great, but I don't really think it's needed for the player to interact with. But it is what it is. So looking at these values, it's pretty easy to see how they determined their standard crit chance set bonus of 657, since that is 219 times 3, meaning our normal gear bonuses are worth 3% extra chance to critically strike. And then you can always just divide whatever number you see represented this way by 219, and that will get you the percentage that it's adding. So as an example, taking the DPS set Order's Wrath, you get two bonuses that are at the 657 mark, and then the 943 crit chance on the five piece bonus. So if if you divide all those by 219, you'll see that it comes out to a total of 10.3% crit chance provided by this set. But crit chance alone is nothing special without its best friend crit damage, so let's take a look at that now. If you didn't have any crit damage, then it wouldn't matter if you successfully landed a critical strike, as there would be no additional damage added. However, everyone starts out with a base crit damage modifier of plus 50%. So this means without any additional buffs or bonuses to this stat, if you have a hit that would deal 10k damage, if it crits, it will hit for 15k damage. Another way to look at this is it is a 1.5 times modifier. So there are lots of ways to increase this, which I'll cover in just a bit, but the maximum that it can be increased to while still gaining a benefit is up to an additional 125% crit damage or 2.25 times multiplier. That's where they've capped it out. So while you could build higher than that, anything beyond this amount will be wasted as you won't see any further results. So with that 10K hit at the crit damage cap, we'd hit for 22.5K damage whenever we land a critical strike, up quite a bit from that base of 50% extra damage. I do want to point out that this is noted in the in-game settings under the advanced stats tab. Both the base crit damage that everyone starts with and the crit damage cap are written here. However, under your damage bonuses where it shows your crit damage, this 50% is not included for some reason. So just keep in mind that whatever number you end up seeing there, you'll have to add another 50% on top of it. I think it's a little confusing to have that start at zero when everyone starts at 50, but maybe they'll update that at some point. For now, just something to note. 
And as I mentioned earlier, there are a number of ways to build to get to that crit damage cap. For organized group content, you'll commonly see Major Force from Warhorns, the support set Elemental Catalyst, and Minor Brittle from Frost Daves. These get you up to 95% of that 125% cap, leaving you 30% left. However, it's worth noting that aside from really sweaty groups, you probably won't have the best uptimes on these group buffs and debuffs. So I often will build a little bit over that 125% cap for most runs just to account for that. But there are a lot of options here. Backstabber and Fighting Finesse are really efficient ways to get crit damage just using your champion point nodes. And then some classes have it a little bit easier than others with crit damage being included as a part of their class kit as well. But this is up on my website at skinnycheeks.gg if you need to reference it, as well as this chart here for the trial dummy. Pretty similar here, except that the provided buffs and debuffs will be up 100% of the time, so there's no need to build past that 125%. Just make sure that you account for the remaining 30% to hit the cap. Moving on to the third part of the crit trio, we have crit resistance. This is only relevant for PvP as enemies in PvE cannot critically strike, so there's no need to add any crit resistance to your build for PvE content. Everyone starts with 1320 crit resistance as a base, and again, this is going to be based around characters treated as level 66, so every 66 crit resistance will equal 1%. So if we divide 1320 by 66, we get 20% crit resistance to start out with. This just means if someone hits us and critically strikes, let's say their crit damage is at plus 80%, then if we just had that 20% base, that would knock it down to 60% instead. Pretty straightforward system, really. And then there are other ways to build into this as well, such as the 10% node in the champion points, certain gear set bonuses and buffs, and the gear trait impenetrable. And all of these you can just divide by 66 if you want to know exactly how much crit damage resistance that adds for you. As I said, the system is pretty straightforward, but there are a couple of things I see a little bit of confusion around sometimes. First off, you cannot lower someone's hit beneath the base value. So if I have 70% crit resistance and they only have 60% crit damage, then I just knock that 60% off and they hit me as though it wasn't a crit. It doesn't dip into the negative though. And then for building past the cap, someone could in theory build up to say 165% crit damage. And let's say I had 40% crit resistance. Well, they would still be at that cap of 125%. So essentially my crit resistance in that scenario is not doing anything as they are going to hit me for the capped amount of crit damage there regardless. It's similar to how building armor above the armor cap works with penetration. So with that crit damage cap, it is the ending value after the resistances are applied, not the starting value that matters for the cap. All right, moving on. One thing I often get asked is how much damage does crit chance add or how much damage does crit damage add? And there's not a super straightforward way to answer that because you not only need both of these together to calculate that, but you also need to know your starting point before the stats are added. So while I was working on this video, I put together this spreadsheet to compare stats so that I could show the various ranges for adding crit chance and crit damage. Originally, I was just going to include those two stats, but I kind of ended up going down a rabbit hole and adding in all of our stats here. So I'll have this linked in the description if anyone wants to play around with it, but you will need to hit file, make a copy if you want to edit the values yourself. So the more obvious part to this is that the higher the crit damage is, the more value that you get in adding more crit chance. I mean, it makes sense, right? So we'll use our standard 657 or 3% crit chance bonus to take a look at some different scenarios. Keeping all other stats the same, if we are only at our base of 50% crit damage with a starting point of 57% crit chance, if we add in 3% more, that bumps us up to 60% and it's just a 1.2% damage increase. But if we were up at that crit damage cap of 125%, it's nearly doubled at a 2.2% increase. Now, another important factor in how much damage is added is your starting crit chance. So with these, I used a pretty average starting and ending point here, but let's say I was all the way down at that base of 10% crit chance. Well, in that spot, adding in 3% to get to 13% is a 3.3% damage increase. Now, it's really unlikely that you'd ever be this low on crit chance other than starting a brand new character without any set bonuses and passives, and therefore you probably wouldn't be capped out on your crit damage, but it's still interesting to note the difference there. So essentially, the lower your crit chance 
and the higher your crit damage, the more impact adding in crit chance will have. And then on the opposite end, as the worst case scenario, again, pretty unlikely to have these stats, but if we had that base to work with of 50% crit damage, and then adding in the 3% took us from 97% to 100% crit chance, that would be the lowest possible damage increase we could see from adding a crit chance bonus line at only 1%. So the bottom line is that it can, in theory, range from a 1% boost up to a 3.3% boost to add in 3% crit chance, but in more realistic situations, it's usually going to be around that 1.5 to 2.5% damage increase. It is also worth noting that the Slime Crawl monster set does have a higher value here than any other One Piece bonus. So this one is actually 3.5% instead of 3%. So you can squeeze out just a tiny bit more if you use that compared to a One Piece with a regular line of crit chance. So how do these bonuses compare to other set bonuses? Well, like crit chance, many of the other bonuses will also vary depending on your starting point and also what kind of buffs you currently have going. So I ran some pretty typical ranges that you might find yourself in to compare them. Obviously this is not all encompassing, but these are probably the more likely scenarios you'd find yourself in. Feel free to compare your specifics using the spreadsheet. So 1487 penetration here is worth a bit more of a percent increase if you only have the 700 from your champion points at a 4.7% damage boost compared to if you are just perfectly hitting the 18,200 cap with it, which would only be about a 3.1% damage increase, which is still pretty solid. But penetration does have that downside that it can actually be a worthless stat line if you are already past the penetration cap. I did just recently do a video on penetration if you're wanting to dig into that stat a little bit further. I won't talk about it much here, but I just wanted to have it as a comparison point. The next strongest bonus seems to be the Slime Crawl One Piece bonus of 771 crit chance. And then we have the regular crit chance and the weapon and spell damage bonuses being very similar here. For most scenarios, I think the crit chance bonus is going to inch out ahead of the weapon and spell damage bonus, but they are very close and it's likely you won't really be able to tell much of a difference between the two. Crit chance does get better with more optimized situations though, whereas weapon and spell damage gets worse. So that will have an impact there depending on what you're doing. But Generally, I'm pretty happy with either a crit chance or a weapon and spell damage line as the bonuses I'm getting on a DPS set. It doesn't really matter too much unless my crit chance is starting to get really low, like under the 50% mark, and then I might start really prioritizing more crit chance there. Finally, for the max resource line, either max magicka or stamina, whichever you're building into, this is the lowest of the damage boosts of the four types of stats that boost your damage, but it still adds in a little bit there. So to sum it up, penetration is the best if you need it, but the worst if you don't. Then I'd prioritize crit chance, then weapon and spell damage, and then the max resource boosts. And like I mentioned, this spreadsheet will be linked in the description if you want to plug in your own comparisons to help make decisions for your specific build. Well, I hope this helped to make some more sense of crit chance, crit damage, and crit resistance in the Elder Scrolls Online. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments below, or you can join our Discord server that's linked in the description. Big thanks to all my Patreon supporters and YouTube members. The monthly contributions help out a ton to keep the website and YouTube channel going. And a special thanks to... Nicholas, Simon, Cooper was Bay, and the Cooper City Guild and the Order of War Guild. Can take a risk, Cat, Shady, Iffy, Blake1816, and Mordecai 1212, Santanico, Fadridi, Florian, Phoenix, and Melandia, Unemployed, Chriseliana. We can't forget about Cha Cha. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see y'all in the next one. Uh, bye.